those are Agnes, Aguela, Adiambo. <laughs> I never quite use that one much. Um, I'm a biomedical researcher, uh, specifically a postdoctoral research fellow here at Kemri Welcome Trust in Kilifi. Um, my journey in science is quite interesting because it actually started uh, when I was a child. I was a very curious child. Um, I did not like, to, I might stay a weird child. I did not like to play with dolls, neither did I like to watch cartoons. <laughs> I would, uh, in those moments, I would much rather have had uh, small animals um, to do my very crude experiment at the annoyance of my mother, and sorry, to the annoyance of my mom, because I would be busy dissecting small animals and really being inquisitive and wondering what lies beneath the skin, or if it's an insect, what lies beneath the exoskeleton, how does the whole uh, biological system function, you know, how does it um, stall, how does it progress, and how does it ultimately um, come to rest. So those are sort of some of the questions I had as a kid. So I guess I was, uh, I was born a what? Um, a nerd, <laughs> so to speak. And so that was basically my interest in science. I didn't know what it was called at the time until I got to school. Uh, to a point where I understood that that kind of uh, inquiry is actually system, sy systematically known as science. And so then I, I began to love every subject that um, had any, provided any sort of explanation to the questions that I already had. Um, and then um, that was uh, basically um, encouraged by my teachers uh, who saw that I had uh, a gift in, in scientific subjects and I would perform very well. And subsequently I began to receive awards um, in school based on that good performance and that only uh, worked to actually promote, cement my interest uh, and just promote my belief in myself that I was a scientist and actually I think I began to be called the scientist, and I loved I loved the name then, very nerdy. But yeah, that was basically um, the beginning of my interest. And so after elementary school, going through high school, I paid uh, close attention. You know, of course, you have to do well in all the subjects, but I I really loved uh, biological sciences and chemistry, and and just. Um, you know, did my bit, worked hard in those, and made sure I, I put in um, the work and got good grades. And then going to campus, it was, it was kind of an, a natural trajectory just to choose a science subject. I know everyone who loves science, the first thought is you want to become a doctor. But then uh, what happens if you are not able, to, you are not selected um, because those spaces are few? So I ended up studying uh, medical biochemistry at the University of Nairobi. Uh, in my bachelor's degree, um, I graduated um, with first class honors. And then at the time, um, the Cambridge Welcome Trust here had advertised um, internship positions for entry level graduates. Um, and I applied and then I got selected, so I came here. So this was my first real hands on um, exposure. Or, or introduction to scientific research in all its norms because you know I got to work with I got to see you know practically see a female mentors which was encouraging because then you know that you know there's already somebody in that field who has made it and so you then believe that you also can make it um, and they provided a very good uh, foundational um, guidance and mentorship to me um, and I was able to then uh, develop a deeper interest in immunology, which is the study of the immune system. Um, and then afterwards, I proceeded to do my doctor of philosophy. People in Oxford don't like to call it PhD, we call it a DPhil. So I went, I proceeded to go to uh, the University of Oxford to undertake a, a, a four-year uh, doctor of philosophy in immunology and translational medicine. And after four years, I graduated and then um, landed back <laughs> uh, at Kemri uh, to pursue a postdoctoral uh, fellowship. 
and that's where I've been until now. So at the moment, the focus of my work um, is a project looking at the mechanisms, um, the immunological mechanisms that can predispose young children to severe infections. So that's in a nutshell, that's, that's what I'm, my current research area is. So uh, I grew up, so I'm the second born in a family of seven. Um, I grew up in a small township, then it was a small township of Maseno. So nowadays Maseno has Maseno University, so I guess everybody knows it. But those days it was just a, a small township. Um, my childhood was spent outdoors, basically. And that I think, uh, that sort of outdoors, like, like I said, I wasn't interested much in watching TV. I was not a TV, cartoon, dolls kind of girl. I was more inquisitive. I would, I would much rather have gone to the field to collect frogs and, you know, crabs and dissect them. <laughs> I know that sounds weird. But I was quite the dissector. Actually, I thought I was going to be a, become a cardiothoracic surgeon. That's a story for another day. But I, I was doing my own surgeries then. And my mom was never happy about it. But I did it. You know, you get punished and then you do it again the next day. <laughs> and then I remember once I, we went to play and I, I got a crab and I heated it up. And then it, it was like, a, it was dark colored before it got heated up. And then after heating it up, it became pink. And I was curious. I was like, wow, is this a miracle? You know, is this like a case of Jesus turning water into wine? Or how does a crab get from black to pink? And it's only years later that I actually got on Dr. Google to check why does a crab <laughs> get from dark to pink? And I found out it's actually a protein that when heated, turns into a, a completely different, the chemical structure basically changes and becomes something else that then is pink colored. So that made sense to me. So you, you can see I carried my curiosity even over years, yeah? So I started school, I think, in 19... Oh, God. I, was it 91? Class 1, 91, yeah? Yes. And then I started, um, I went to just the local primary school, Maseno Mixed Primary School. Um, and then at, at about 1994, in class four, I transitioned in 1995 to a boarding school uh, near girls' uh, boarding primary school, which is in Siaya County. And that is where I did my uh, KCP exams. And then afterwards in um, to 1999, I joined um, Alliance Girls, High school in Kikuyu, um, and then I was um, completed a secondary school um, in 2002. Yes, how can I not remember this date? <laughs> 1999 to 2002, so class of 2002, shout out, yeah. And then uh, from there, I, I joined the uh, University of Nairobi. We had the two year gap then. I joined the University of Nairobi in 2004 to 2007 to pursue my bachelor's degree in biochemistry, medical biochemistry to be precise. Graduated in 2007 with a first class honors. I took up an internship position at the Cambridge Wellcome Trust uh, Research Program in Kilifi, uh, where I started my, if you like, uh, you know, classical training in, in, you know, scientific research, biomedical research to be precise, where my interest in immunology grew. And then I applied for a DPhil, or a PhD if you like, uh, to study immunology and translational medicine at the University of Oxford. So I went to, I, I went to Oxford, I joined in, the, in October 2009, and then graduated with my DPhil in 2013. Basically that's when I finished, it was a four year uh, course. Um, and then in, I stayed in Oxford, I did like a transitional, um, some tra transitional work at the John Radcliffe Hospital in Oxford at their translational gastroenterology unit, still just doing some immunology. And then I thought, okay, it was time to come back home. And then I came back and landed back here at the Cambridge Wellcome Trust, where I've been doing my research until now. 
um, and my research is focused on understanding the immune mechanisms that predispose young children to serious infections. Okay, so um, uh, there are, I think, generally, there are still very, very few women in the field of STEM, generally. Um, and, I, and some of the reasons, from my experience, I may not have necessarily faced them, but maybe I wasn't looking. Maybe I was just focused on walking my journey and I didn't look. But I do know that there's this uh, cultural stereotype. It's like a gender stereotype that scientific subjects are a uh, preserve of men, that males will do better um, than women in science subjects, which I clearly is a myth because then we wouldn't have made it. Some of us wouldn't have made it in those fields. Um, there is no biological evidence to date that shows that, you know, the part of the brain that, uh, you know, imparts in intellect is, is superior in males compared to females. That is a myth. I don't know where that came from. Maybe uh, in, some, in certain culture coming from male-dominated societies, you'll just have like a, you know, a narrative that is perpetuated over time and then people begin to believe it even though there is no, um, you know, evidence to support those claims. So, and then uh, the other thing is, yes, it is true that um, some women or, or females will have an interest in pursuing science subjects and then at some point, especially at university level, it's sort of where you chart your journey and you decide to specialize in whatever subject um, and, and most people then proceed to have that as a career. Um, people, I don't, people tend to drop out because again, there, there seems to ex that stereotype seems to be carried on but also at that point, people begin to sort of consider the practical realities of being a scientist versus being a woman, okay? Because, you know, as a woman, unlike men, if you, for example, want to have a family in future, uh, the scientific career is rigorous. It is uh, time-consuming. Sometimes you need to travel. Uh, sometimes you need to further your studies. And so if you begin to apply those considerations and you feel like you will not have a good life-work balance, some people actually opt to, to drop out and pursue other things that would allow them to still be, you know, um, embody their female roles. If they are, for example, if you are a, a wife and a mother, um, compared to science, which they think will not allow them to do that. But I, that is also mythical to a certain extent. It is true that, that the, the career is demanding, but there are, you know, women who pursue science and still have great families and manage them effectively as scientists.